when we have a reversible reaction at equilibrium, the Chatelier's principle tells us what happens when we disturb that equilibrium. So if we disturb it, we're not going to off of equilibrium. It wants to get back to equilibrium. And um, uh, Chatelier's principle says that it's going to offset what we do. It's going to do the opposite of what we do. So if we add a chemical, the reaction is going to consume what we add to get back to equilibrium. If we remove a chemical, the reaction will produce the chemical to get back to equilibrium. And heat behaves similar to a chemical. Uh, we'll look at that uh, in a little bit. Uh, the difference is that uh, when we change the temperature, we're changing the equilibrium constant also. Where here, when we're adding or removing chemicals, the equilibrium constant does not change. So we have a reaction here, methane reacting with um, bromine to make dibromomethane and hydrogen bromide. So if we add more bromine, we're adding a reactant. So we're adding a, a reactant. It's going to consume that reactant by moving to the right. So we're going to consume all the reactants and produce all the products. Uh, but we're going to shift right in this process. that we're shifting toward products. So by shifting to the right, we're going to consume all reactants, including what we added, and then we're going to produce all products. If we remove uh, bromine, so we're decreasing bromine, it's going to uh, produce bromine by shifting to the left. So it's going to shift left. So shift toward reactants. If we add a product, we increase the amount of products, it's going to consume products. So it's, it's going to shift left. If we remove a product, so we remove that HBR, we decrease the amount of product is going to make more products. So it's going to do that by shifting right. So for another reaction, we've got uh, charcoal plus carbon dioxide gives carbon monoxide gas. We're at equilibrium and we add more charcoal. What will happen? Well, we're adding a reactant our first guess is that we're going to shift to the right, but our equilibrium expression our equilibrium expression does not have the charcoal because it's a solid. Since the solid does not show up, since that reactant does not show up in the equilibrium expression, no change is going to occur. So there's going to be no change. So if we add or remove something that does not show up in the equi equilibrium expression, we're not going to get a response. So what happens if, what happens is for add something, it shows up in the equilibrium expression, it knocks this value off. So now our reaction quotient does not match or match the equilibrium expression. So it has to shift between reactants and products to move that reaction quotient back to equal the equilibrium expression. So let's look at the uh, next board, the effect of temperature. So 
Not sure we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we have to you know, answer the effect of a changing temperature or adding or removing heat. It, we need to know whether we're dealing with an exothermic or endothermic reaction. So an exothermic reaction, heat shows up as a product in the reaction. And I didn't write that out for my reactions here. Um, I'll do that as I'm going through. For an endothermic reaction, heat is a reaction. So while we're raising the temperature, that means we're adding heat. If we're lowering the temperature, it means that we're removing heat. So it behaves, heat is going to behave the same way as a, a chemical. We just have to know whether we're dealing with an exothermic or endothermic reaction. But the other process here is that if we uh, uh, shift toward products, we're going to be changing the equilibrium constant, increasing the equilibrium constant. If we're shifting left, shifting toward reactants, we're de decreasing the equilibrium constant. So when we're adding or removing chemicals, the equilibrium constant remains constant. So here we have um, a reaction and we have a delta H that's positive. So this means, the positive means that it's endothermic. It means we could write heat as a reactant in this. So if we're reducing the temperature, we're removing heat, we're removing a reactant. So it will have to shift left to make more heat. So it will shift left. If we're Increasing the temperature, we're adding heat, we're adding a reactant. It's going to consume that by shifting toward products. So it's going to shift right. So on this next example, our delta H is negative. It means we have an exothermic reaction. That means we can add heat as a product. So if we reduce temperature, we're removing heat, we're removing a product, so the reaction is going to shift right to make more products. If we increase temperature, we're adding heat, adding a product, so it's going to consume products by shifting toward reactants, so it'll shift left. Okay, we have another question here. If the equilibrium constant decreases as temperature decreases, is reaction exothermic or endothermic? Um, so if we decrease temperature, we're removing heat. If the equilibrium constant decreases, that means we're shifting left. So let me write this out as a reactants plus products. Going to products. So by decreasing temperature, we're removing heat. Equilibrium constant decreasing means that we're shifting left toward uh, reactants. That means we're removing a reactant. So that means heat is a reactant. So that means we have an endothermic reaction. And I have one more board for the effect of pressure. Will stay. Won't stay. Let me redo more boards. And 
adjust the camera. Just a camera. Can okay, to change pressure, there are two ways that we can change pressure of a system, of a gaseous system. One is by adding a gas. Well, if we add a reactant or a product, we go back to the first board. Uh, if we add a reactant, we're going to shift right. If we add a product, we're going to shift left. But we can also add a inert gas, a non-reacting gas. Uh, but again, if it does not show up in the equilibrium expression, it has no response. So adding or removing a inert gas will have no response on the chemical system. We can also change the pressure by changing volume. So if we reduce volume, we're going to increase pressure. If we increase volume, we decrease pressure. So if we end up increasing pressure by reducing volume, the system is going to reduce pressure. So it does the opposite of what we do. And um, the only way it can reduce pressure by reducing moles of the gas. If we increase volume, that decreases pressure. It will respond to increase pressure. And the only way it can do that is to increase moles of gas. So in this first reaction, we have our sulfur trioxide decomposing into sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas. We have uh, our enthalpy of reaction uh, we have no temperature questions here. So sometimes we have some extraneous information. Don't let that distract us. But if we decrease volume, increase pressure, it's going to offset what we do. So it's going to uh, reduce pressure. So we have to see how many moles of gas that we have on both sides of the reaction. So we have two moles of gas on the reactant side, three moles of gas on the product side. So it has increased pressure, so it wants to decrease pressure. So it can decrease pressure by going from three to two. So it can decrease by going from products to reactants or shifting left. So by shifting left, we're decreasing our moles from three down to two. If we add nitrogen to the system, nitrogen is not a reactant or a product, and so it's an inert gas. So this will have no response. I didn't mention a catalyst uh, in the rules up here also. So catalyst speeds up a reaction by lowering the activation energy of a reaction. But again, it does not show up in the equilibrium expression. So the catalyst will help us to get to equilibrium faster, but it not, does not affect where the equilibrium position is. So again, this will be no response. Okay, over here, we have a monoatomic iodine creating diatomic iodine. We have a delta H of negative 20. And uh, again, we don't have temperature equations for that. It is extraneous information. We get that at times. We have to be able to recognize what we need to use and can ignore. So if we um, decrease volume, we increase pressure. So it wants to decrease pressure to the opposite of what we do. It does that by decreasing moles. We have two moles of gas on the left, one mole on the right. So it can decrease moles by shifting toward the products or shifting right. We 
if we increase volume, we decrease pressure, it will want to increase, not counter to what we do. So it's going to shift left to increase the moles gas. If we add helium, helium is not a reactant or product, so it's a non-reacting or inert gas. So that will have no response. Another reaction, hydrogen gas reacting with iodine gas to produce hydrogen iodide. If we decrease volume, we're going to increase pressure. So our response is to decrease pressure or decreasing moles. We check our moles. We have one plus one, two moles of reactant gas, two moles of product gas. So no matter which way we shift from this, we're not going to change moles of gas. We're not going to change pressure at all. So this will have no response. If we increase volume, we're going to decrease pressure. The response is to increase pressure, but again, no matter which way it goes, it can't change moles of gas, so it can't increase pressure. So again, no response. We add neon gas. That's inert, it's not showing up as a reactant or a product. So again, no response.